Well, good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer Online. You'll find it helpful to have a copy of the service sheet, which can be downloaded from the church website, or there'll be a link somewhere around this video box uh, that you could use as well. And that will give you the words for our hymns, the prayers and the reading in a few moments time. We'll begin with the opening responses in a moment, but first a word of explanation, if I may. You'll have noticed this week that I'm not recording this in the church building. Sadly, we've had a power cut in church these last few days. The electricians are working to restore the power uh, as I speak, but unfortunately that means right now that there's no lighting in church at all, and there's also quite a lot of noise. So please forgive me if I'm recording this uh, in the vicarage rather than in the church building, although we hope to be back to normal for next weekend. But as we begin together, let's look at the words of preparation, and I invite you to join with me in the words that are in bold. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Give us the joy of your saving help, and sustain us with your life-giving spirit. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. We're going to begin with our opening hymn, Oh, for a closer walk with God. Do join in, please, as Richard leads us in this opening hymn. too aware that our walk with God is not close and there are many things for which we need to seek his forgiveness. So with that in mind let's turn now to our prayer of confession and we say together Almighty God our Heavenly Father we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed through negligence through weakness for our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins. Heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Our psalm for today is Psalm 32. It's one of my favourites, and perhaps it is for you as well. A wonderful psalm to encourage us as we gather together. Psalm 32, and do follow as I read. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. For when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me, my strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Therefore, let everyone who is godly offer prayer to you at a time when you may be found. Surely in the rush of great waters they shall not reach him. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Be not like a horse or a mule without understanding, which must be curbed with bit and bridle, or it will not stay near you. Many are the sorrows of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds the one who trusts in the Lord. Be glad in the Lord. And rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, as we come to look at God's word, let's pray together, shall we? Dear Heavenly Father, we bow in your presence. May your word be our rule, your spirit our teacher, and your greater glory, our supreme concern, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Imagine, if you will, a farm. And on this farm, there is some bad weather coming, and the farmer is concerned for his animals. So before the bad weather sets in, he goes around uh, collecting them all up and bringing them all in to safety. And so the sheep are brought in from the hillsides and they're kept warm and sheltered and well fed. The cows are safe in the barn, they're enjoying their feed and they're ready for the night. The pigs, the chickens too, are now in their shelters, noisily eating away. They're all nice and warm and there's nothing to be concerned about as the weather sets in. But out in the field, there is still a horse or perhaps a mule, and it refuses to come in. And the farmer goes out and tries to catch hold of it and to bring it into safety, but the horse, the mule, is having none of it and just runs away. It's determined not to be caught. And of course, the problem is that while all of the other animals are warm and dry and fed and safe, not so the horse or the mule. Now, eventually the farmer catches up with it and puts a bit or a bridle on it and perhaps sticks it in the trailer behind the Land Rover and brings it in to safety. But one of these days, the obstinacy of the horse or the mule is meaning it's just not going to work out for it and it's going to be left exposed and outside. Now, with that little story in mind, let's look together, shall we, at verse 9. Be not, says the psalmist, be not like a horse or a mule without understanding, which must be curbed with bit or bridle, or it will not stay near you. You see, the Lord our God longs to draw his people in for a blessing. Verse 10 is a reality that breaks his heart. Let me read again. Many are the sorrows of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds the one who trusts in the Lord. 
And the problem is that too many of us are like that horse or mule. We are stubborn and we refuse to come to the Lord. And the result is that we endure pain and sorrows and tears and unhappiness. Now, how might we end up like this? Well, the rest of Psalm 32 explains what's going on. It's to do, verses 1 and 2, with being blessed. Now, blessed is a great Bible word. It's to do with being happy, to do with being glad and joyful. It's how God wants the people he has created to be. And yet so often it's not the reality of our everyday lives. It's what though the Lord wants us to enjoy. Just like the farmer wants the animals to come in to be safe and protected, so too the Lord wants his people to be blessed in many different ways. But the problem is our sin. Now, in those first couple of verses, our sin is described in a number of different ways. First of all, the word transgression is used. That's uh, used of, of, of a sense of rebellion, of, of breaking the rules. God has laid down laws and rules for us, and we transgress as we break those rules. The second word that's used is the word sin itself, that sense of going astray, um, uh, failing to meet God's standards, uh, falling short of the mark that he has set. The third word is the word iniquity, which is to do with, uh, with twisting things, things being put, put out of the right order, things being perverted, things being made all twisted and uh, not the way that they should be. And then fourthly is the word deceit, and that is used when we try to disguise all of our transgression and sin and iniquity by concealing the truth. Perhaps we try to conceal the truth by deceiving others. Perhaps we try to conceal the truth by deceiving God, although we know that will never work. Perhaps we try to conceal the truth from ourselves as we do actually manage to deceive ourselves as to the true state of reality. And we experience this in two ways, and they are both destructive. First there's guilt, and then there is shame. Now guilt and shame aren't quite the same thing. Uh, guilt is when we say, I did something bad. Shame is when we say, I am bad. Guilt focuses on our behaviour. It's when we say, perhaps, I made a mistake. Whereas shame focuses on the very essence of ourselves. It's when we might even say, I am a mistake. Now, left alone, both guilt and shame are terribly destructive. They can destroy our relationship with God. They can destroy our relationships with, uh, with friends. They can destroy relationships within families, particularly within families, I think. And on this Mother's Day, I just want to pause for a moment and to reflect on how significant this is. Let's think about this for a moment, because I think guilt and shame can be one of the reasons why Mother's Day is so hard. It can be hard for mothers, and indeed for grandmothers and aunts and fathers too, and it can be hard for children, those who want to thank their mothers. After all, almost all parents are very conscious that they are not perfect, that they have made mistakes and they go on making mistakes every day. Which means that there's a lot of guilt involved in motherhood and in fatherhood. Parents are constantly thinking, I, I have made a mistake as a parent. And that guilt can quickly turn to shame. There's the shame which says, I am a bad parent. I've heard many people say, in different contexts, in different ways, but often through tears, I'm a bad mother, or I'm a, I'm a bad parent. And the shame that is involved in that is crippling, destructive, and terrible. 
But we can broaden this out because it's not just for mothers and for parents. Almost all of us have things in our past which ruin our happiness. Things that we've done that we look back on and we know that we shouldn't have done. Maybe things that we didn't do, which we now wish that we had done. And if we had our time all over again, we would handle the situation very differently and do those things that we didn't do back in the past. Maybe, though, there are things that we've said or things that we've done that we desperately wish now that we could take back. And, and we feel the guilt of that. We look back at those things and we think that was bad. That was badly done. But also we feel the shame. I am bad, we say to ourselves. And verse 10 really, really echoes for us. Many are the sorrows of the wicked. We know that deep down, don't we? And I think, by the way, it's the problem with many of the big family moments in the year. Whether that's Mother's Day or Christmas Day or other anniversaries. Yes, there's all the delight and the excitement of the cards and the presents, but it's mixed up with so much guilt and so much shame on all sides. And into all of that, verses 1 and 2 come as great news. Our transgression can be forgiven, our sin can be covered, our iniquity can be not counted against us, our deceit can be done away with totally. Just look with me, will you, again at those first two verses and hear the comfort this brings to us. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man or woman against whom the Lord counts no iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit. And that person is indeed blessed, aren't they? Reflect on what that means, on the joy, the happiness that that will be like, the blessing that it offers. And that's what the Lord longs to do for each and every human being. Just like the farmer in that story longs to bring all of the animals in, that they might enjoy the blessing of safety and security and being well fed and watered. So the Lord longs to bring all his people in that they might enjoy the blessing that comes from knowing that our sins can be forgiven and forgotten forever. It's as if the Lord is saying to each one of us, individually and corporately, let me make you blessed. Let me make you happy and glad and joyful. But here's the problem. And forgive me for a moment, because I'm aware that this isn't wildly complimentary. But here's the problem. Some of us are still stubborn, like the horse or the mule. We refuse to come to the Lord. We avoid him. When he comes towards us, we run away. We stay, as verse 3 puts it, we stay silent. And we find that it eats us up from the inside, our bones wasted away. We feel the hand of the Lord is heavy upon us and our strength is all dried up. Just like the mule, avoiding the one who would offer blessing. So too sadly, so many people avoid the Lord and refuse to come to him. Now the solution is there in verse 5. When the psalmist says, I acknowledged my sin to you and I did not cover my iniquity. When the psalmist said, I will forgive, i sorry, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. He is able to reflect on the fact that you forgave the iniquity of my sin. When deceit gives way to confession, everything changes. When we stop trying to cover our own sin, verse 5, God does it for us, verse 1. So, happy are those who recognise that they are not righteous, but who know what to do about it. 
We take all of our guilt, we take all of our shame to the Lord and we acknowledge it and we confess it before him and he deals with it. And dare I say that that is great news for all mothers on Mother's Day. But it's also great news for all of us, all of the time. That guilt that can eat away at us, that shame that causes our bones to waste away within us, needn't define us. We needn't be defined by our guilt and our shame. These things can be forgiven and forgotten forever. No wonder, therefore, that the psalm ends on such a joyful note. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. Don't we feel like that when we experience our sins being forgiven and forgotten forever? But the temptation remains to be like the horse or the mule. Instead of coming to the Lord to resist, to hold out in our independence, to hold out in our desire to cover over our own sins as if that might one day work, to conceal them in the hope that God and other people won't notice what is so evident to all, or simply to deny them, to continue deceiving others, even deceiving ourselves. And we hold out in that sense of independence as if we can deal with our own sins, but it doesn't work. Many are the sorrows of the wicked, verse 10, but steadfast love surrounds the one who trusts in the Lord. And a thousand years after these verses were written, the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross. And as he gave his life as a sacrifice for sins, it meant that the sins of every single person could be cast upon him rather than left burdening each one of us. He takes all our guilt and all our shame that we might go free and that we might rejoice. We've seen in these Psalms over these last few weeks in Lent how they offer us help in all sorts of different times. And wonderfully, they offer us help when we are guilty. So in the light of all of that, as we come to the Lord, it's no wonder, is it, that verse 11, we can be glad in the Lord and rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. Let's pray together, shall we? Heavenly Father, we pray that you will help us to be wise and to come to you, not to hold out like the horse or the mule, to be stubborn as if we can deal with our sin ourselves, but instead to confess it, to acknowledge it before you and to rejoice in the blessing you offer as you forgive our sins, that they might be forgiven and forgotten forever. And we pray for each one of us that we might know the joy of sins forgiven and the freedom that comes as you set us free. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to take the opportunity now to affirm our faith as Christian people. And you'll see there in the service sheet the words of the Creed. Do please join with me as we say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And in light of all of that, 
Let's now turn to prayer. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you love and care for us and want the very best for us. We pray, though, that you will help us to see the truth, to acknowledge our failings and to turn to you. We pray that for ourselves as individual people, but also for our nation, that you might work in and through our leaders and all the people in this land to turn the hearts of the people to yourself, that we might once more know your blessing and goodness upon us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray on, Father, for all of those who are affected by the ongoing pandemic and the lockdown restrictions. We pray for those who are struggling and suffering, whether in body, mind or spirit. We pray for your comfort, your peace and your healing. And we pray for all of us that you will grant us a sense of patience as we wait through these final weeks, we pray, of this lockdown and look forward to the moment when we will be able to return to some sense of normality. But most of all, Lord, we pray that this time may, may, might make us long for heaven all the more, to look forward from that time when we will be free from all restrictions we will be free from all pain and tears and suffering, and we will be with you and all those who love you forevermore. Father, through this time, make us long for heaven all the more. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On this Mothering Sunday, we pray in particular for mothers, for grandmothers and aunts, for all of those in families and all of those who long to be in families, but for whom family life either feels absent or feels painful. We pray, Lord, as we thank you for all those who have cared for us, as we thank you today for our own mothers, we pray for your peace and your healing in all family relationships. And we pray, Lord, that we might do all that we can to live lives of peace and reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And the Collect for Mothering Sunday. Do join in as we pray this together. God of compassion, whose son Jesus Christ, the child of Mary, shared the life of a home in Nazareth and on the cross drew the whole human family to himself. Strengthen us in our daily living, that in joy and in sorrow we may know the power of your presence to bind together and to heal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we finish our prayers with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive all those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, before we come to our closing hymn, just a quick word of update on life at St Peter's at the moment. Uh, I hope you've received a copy of the update, whether by email or from the website or by post. And if you haven't, do let us know so we can make sure that you're kept up to date with what's going on. Uh, you'll see in there a short note about our Make a Mother's Day gift day. And can I thank in advance all of those who have given so generously towards that. And we will be announcing the figure that's been raised in the Lent online at 10 o'clock this morning and also putting the details in next weekend's update. So do look out for that. But thank you to all who have given so that we might continue the sponsorship of our two sponsored children, uh, Mary in the Philippines and Richard in Brazil. We hope in a couple of weeks time to be back into church. Uh, now that is partly depending on the exact details of the government restrictions. 
It's also admittedly dependent upon power being restored, although we hope that that will happen in the next few hours, if not days. Full details will be in the update next weekend, so do please look out for that. But what we do know is that if we are back in church on Palm Sunday, uh, the restrictions will still apply. And if you were with us uh, last autumn, you'll remember what that involved. And it seems almost certain that the same will be true now. Uh, but also, therefore, so we can be sure of numbers, we're going to be asking people to register in advance so we know how many to expect and that uh, demand won't outstrip supply. Again, more details will be coming out next weekend, but we do hope in a fortnight's time to be able to welcome back to church those who would like to come. We will, though, be continuing with something online, and we appreciate that for many that will be preferable while the restrictions continue. Now, there are lots of other things in the update, and I encourage you to uh, take a look uh, at that. But as always, if you've got any questions or concerns, then do please get in contact, and you'll see the contact details are at the bottom of page two there. But we're going to close now with our final hymn, what a friend we have in Jesus. Great words, wonderful ideas, and they are truths to rejoice in. Let's sing along as Richard leads us now. Thanks, Richard. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to come. Everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful? Who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Oh, we weak and heavy laden, burdened with a load of care. Jesus is our mighty Saviour. He will listen to our prayer. Do your friends despise for sin? Take you, take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he will enfold you, and his love will shield you there. Richard, thanks very much indeed. And as we seek to remember those truths as we go now into the week that lies ahead of us, Let's pray for one another in the words of the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Well, again, thank you for joining us for this morning prayer online. We hope next week to be back in church. We hope the following week to be able to welcome all people back to church who would like to come. But in the meantime, do take care, stay safe, God bless, and bye for now.